Let's take a look at projectile motion part three. Clever ways to get information out of a problem. And the idea here is I'm going to show you a few different ways that physics problems often give you information without telling you the information. Or rather, ways that the problem can ask you a question and you have to supply some of the background in order to solve it. And I'll show you an example of that. So the top of a trajectory. So say we have an object traveling in projectile motion and it gets to the top of that trajectory. This point is called the apex. It's the apex of the trajectory. And if you remember back, I said that in a trajectory, the velocity is always tangent to that trajectory, as long as we have projectile motion. So if we're at the top of the trajectory, tangent to that trajectory is horizontal. So I'll draw what I mean here. That velocity, when it's at the apex, must be horizontal because it's tangent to the trajectory. The slope of that curve at the top of the trajectory is zero, so the velocity is horizontal. Well, if the velocity is horizontal at that moment, then the vertical component of the velocity is zero. Now, this can be useful when solving problems, and I'll show you an example. Um, but the idea is all based upon the idea that at the apex of the trajectory, the vertical velocity component is zero. So say we have a projectile which is launched from the surface with an initial velocity of 50 meters per second at 60 degrees above horizontal. And the question is going to ask you to find the height at the highest point. Well, the highest point, that's the apex. We're trying to find the height at the apex. Okay. Well, let's see what information we have. We know the horizontal component of the acceleration. We know the vertical component of the acceleration. We can determine the components of the initial velocity. If we draw a little triangle, do a little cosine, do a little sine. So we know ux and uy. Now, that information alone is not enough. But if we know that we're trying to find the height at the highest point, at the highest point, the vertical velocity is zero. So our final vertical velocity, vy, is zero. Because we're looking at the point, the final point that we're looking at, is at the apex when the vertical velocity is zero. So that's an additional piece of information that we know because at the apex, the vertical velocity component is zero. Now we have enough information to find the height at the highest point, because the height at the highest point, we can get that if we solve for the vertical displacement. So let's go ahead and do that. Do our math, and then we get that the vertical displacement is 95.7 meters. There you go. Let's look at another example of sort of hiding information in plain sight. Now let's say we have a situation where the projectile returns to the same height that it started at. So let's say it's launched from the ground and then we want to know maybe how long it takes to come back to the ground. Well, if the projectile starts at the ground and if it ends at the ground, then its vertical displacement was zero. Remember, displacement is the change in its position from beginning to end. So at the beginning it was at the ground, at the end it was at the ground, the vertical displacement was zero. Now certainly there was horizontal displacement, but here there's no vertical displacement. Well, if there's no vertical displacement, then the vertical displacement equals zero meters. So let's see how this can work in practice. Let's say we have an object launched at the surface with an initial velocity of 50 meters per second at 60 degrees above the horizontal. And I want to find the time it takes to return to the surface. Well, we know the horizontal component of the acceleration. We know the vertical component of the acceleration. We know the initial horizontal velocity. We know the initial vertical velocity. 
And we know that if it returns to the surface, the vertical displacement was zero from beginning to end. So now I can use a kinematic equation to solve for the time. All right. And in fact, when I get to this point where I have this equation, there's actually two solutions to this. One solution is t equals zero. And that is telling us that it has a vertical displacement equal to zero at the beginning, which of course it does. If no time passes, then the vertical displacement is zero. So really, that's not a useful solution. That's not the solution we're looking for. Instead, we solve for t. t is equal to 8.84 seconds. That's the time it takes to return to the surface. All right. Let's look at another example of hidden information. Let's think about symmetry of this, because this is a parabola. And parabolas have a lot of symmetry to them. Turns out that one way to use the symmetry is that if it begins and ends at the same height, then it will have the same horizontal velocity and opposite vertical velocities at the beginning and end. So one way that we can think about this is if it's launched at the surface with an initial velocity of 50 meters per second at 60 degrees above horizontal, and I want to know the velocity when it hits the ground. Well, if it's launched and it returns to the same height, well, I said that the horizontal component of the velocity would be the same at the beginning and the end, because of course it never changes. And the vertical velocity would be in opposite directions at the beginning and the end. So that means if we look at these components, the final velocity when it reaches the ground is just 50 meters per second at 60 degrees below horizontal. That's one way to use symmetry. All right. The last thing is the time that it takes is the same for x and y. Time does not have a horizontal component and a vertical component. Time is the same no matter if you're looking at x or y. So time is kind of like a bridge between horizontal and vertical. And I'll show you what I mean. Here's an example of that. And before I do that, I'm going to define one more thing. I'm going to define the range of a projectile. The range of a projectile is the horizontal displacement from beginning to end. It's how far it travels horizontally. So let's take an example. Let's say that we have an object, a projectile, which is launched at the surface with an initial velocity of 80 meters per second at 60 degrees above the horizontal. And I want to find the range of this object. In other words, I want to find the horizontal displacement of this object from launch until it hits the ground. Well, if we write down what we know, we know the horizontal acceleration, we know the vertical acceleration, we can find the horizontal component of the initial velocity and the vertical component of the initial velocity using sine and cosine. And if it returns to the same height, we also know that the vertical displacement is zero. All right. So that seems like a lot. But if I'm trying to find the horizontal displacement, the range. I don't have enough information. I don't have enough information in the x part of this chart. Now, I do have quite a bit of information in y. In y, I could solve for the final vertical velocity, and I could solve for the time. The trick is, remember, time is the same for x and y. So if I can solve for the time using the y information, that time is the same for x and y. So then I'll know the time that passes in the x direction. And if I know that, then I have enough information to solve for the horizontal displacement. And I'll show you what I mean. First, we're going to solve for the time. So we'll write down the kinematic equation, put in the values, and solve for t. All right, 14.1 seconds. Now that we have that, the time in y is the same as the time in x. So now that I have the time in x, I can solve for the horizontal displacement. I can solve for the range. And here, the range, if I do the math, it's equal to 564 meters.